this automation and a display. I'm not going to further elaborate on that. Hope everybody got an idea what is an automation and what is a display. Now I give one particular classic example wherein anyone had a recent experience with Airtel, Airtel Broadband. How many of you have Airtel Broadband? There are very few. That means all are zero. <laughs> no, all zero. Whether your broadband is down or not, do you know it or not? How? Sometimes the light flickers on the router. Yeah, light flickers on the router. If the light is red, then you know that it is off, right? Yes. Agree or not? Yes. Now, just like you must now have a new experience with Airtel now. What the Airtel is doing, you are going to get a message to your mobile that your internet line is down. How they are doing it? They recently put a modern modem there so that this modem automatically like sends the information to them. Then it automatically checks whether what is the problem with that. It, it restarts the router. And if still like you know, the problem is there, if it is an external connection, it yeah, sends a yeah. message to you saying that we assigned this particular router. So imagine the experience. You don't know that. Until unless you see your message on your mobile, you don't know your, your internet is down. So this is what is the way that is called as a, the transformation. It doesn't need a big money. It requires a good thought. That is something is the need. Now that's what, what I was talking about here. It is more of the, the creating a virtual to the physical. Then you need to call and these are all the things what you used to do it, it completely become virtual. So that's an experience of an Airtel. And it's going to be, you are going to experience such kind of thing many in future. Now coming back to this, one question what I would like to ask you. Now, automation is like just converting your existing process to an automated process. First, converting an automated existing process to an automated process, how much time you are taking for implementing a QMS or an LMS? How much time? Because it is a validated system, right? How much time that you are taking for it? Maybe six months? Right or wrong? Six months and ten months? Now that for the current play it has been going on, automation itself is taking longer time. Then, how much time it takes for the display? Yes, you must need to have a roadmap for it. But how much time it takes for a distillation? Now I created a roadmap for a distillation. Now, maybe six years. I've seen uh, organizations that must spend 10 years, and Mr. Ravi yesterday talking about 2015, they started. It takes a good amount of time because there is a, you have, there are many challenges are there. I would like to talk about those challenges. Now, what are the key challenges? One, lack of resources, skills, and talent. What I have seen in the industry, because I am into this uh, pharma's uh, like, you know, solutions industry from long and almost more than 10 years, suddenly what happens, we, have, we are in a very good pace of like, you know, implementing the system, suddenly like, you know, there is an audit comes in, now everybody is like, you know, disappeared from <laughs> Everybody like, you know, now we keep on saying, like, you know, our cost is increasing. Now what happens, now do you have a dedicated team for it? If you keep a dedicated team for it, then can you engage them fully on it? You understand? So that is what I am talking about, like you know, lack of resources and skills is nothing but there is a connect is being required into the technology also. There is a little bit of connect is being required. And organization silos, every organization has got their own style of you know working, their own kind of you know that infrastructure is available. Agree? Yes? Now coming to this legacy systems, we have like you know sometimes because the kind of you know upgrade cost is more, so that we will not upgrade. I am practically talking the real scenarios. Agree or not? And insufficient funding. Agree or Now you cannot write a great URS because, like, it's not considering all these particular parameters. Now, then after it goes to the respective uh, vendor. Now, vendor says, like, every small change and you can earn premium money, premium money. Is it right or not? So, what happens? I approved a fund of like, you know, five crores for you. Why are you again coming every time? For exactly. Right, understand? So, this is the challenge. Now, the next thing is, you know, regulatory and compliance challenges. Now you are changing your BMR. Now you need to get a kind of a complete <laughs> process things get validated and approved and all these particular things. And cyber security and privacy. Nowadays you have seen a good number of cyber attacks has been happened, but the organization really come out very well in that particular situation. But still it is a big challenge. Now IT and business alignment. It is within the organization, right, and also with the vendors also, both the cases. And the next thing is the you know, cost of integration. Agree or not? Do you think all these things are really means factors for your distribution? So I am not 
into the practically work work in the shop floor but i talk to the lowest executive in the shop floor to understand his pain area so that we can able to build a right system that's where these are all the points came up from these all like in some discussions what we had now at ceo level to the down to the shop floor person to address the current challenges because correct me because i am not uh, an expert here but i try to put forth uh, some of the problems what the uh, as a experience in the industry what happens continuous manufacturing is one thing and also the short term demand plan now your sales guy committed something to your customer you are a production head do you know that what commitment sales guy has done to the client kind of customer did he told you before that like you know, i am committing this day to a customer so that like you know that uh, you just like you know, plan your thing did ever ever such kind of discussion happened in the organization happens or doesn't happen it doesn't happen because of the reason because i don't wanted to lose the business right understand sales always wanted to get the business you understand right and then the problem is that not your the demand the planning what you need to do it for a short term suddenly they say like now i need to develop this product so that is what is like i was talking about a short term demand planning and you have a continuous manufacturing of one particular product suddenly something goes down all things completely good so i am trying to relate certain areas in a not getting into the too much of validation and to reach to your displacement model yes for an mbs to build it yes you need to build an mbs and at the same time you need to build a good number of other systems i will talk about those systems now so this is what i want i wanted to mention can you to read it can we have a business intelligence systems to fill the gap between automation and displacement i am not talking about an ai area at this point ai is a long time to go to the industry ai is nothing but is some neural networks i cannot say a robot which is cleaning my house is an ai no because the house that the kind of robot is cleaning is like it knows that where exactly what is it you understand so that means this big now when a car this promotion was talking about in yesterday example where he is talking about a car now i don't know who comes and how who comes other than the buffalo comes especially in india a wood comes like we at what time and even your brain cannot able to see that so that kind of thing requires a lot of time that's the reason it takes years to come out with something to bridge up the gap can we give it some business intelligence systems right to fill the gap between the automation and display and right? coming to this what i'm saying about we talked about display your erps most of you are having right your erp is having or not yes. your sap or some erp you already have right then after that you have e logs some coordination have it some organizations may not have it and mbs maybe you are putting your foot forward towards an mbs then after that your document management systems you definitely must be having it or like you know maybe in the process of getting it developed and your lms right learning management systems and your qms and your lims right laboratory information management system your regulatory information management systems right and your building management systems typically these are all your business process areas you have the process area you may, you need to convert that particular process area into an automation area. now coming to this i'll talk about this this one classic example also i can talk here sales targeting and forecast so what is been happening is like now i'll give a classic example i'll talk I'll, if you don't mind i'll use an example of dr reddy's one so when i take an example of a dr reddy's when we it's in 2016 we started a concept called as sales targeting for every year it used to take 45 days to set the dg india sales now what is when you have done a kind of sales targeting and the forecasting and on basis of that you have done a capacity planning now what will happen let us say for the entire year so your targeting is like you know going to be done once in a 6 months you can able to have a control on there are some unexpected orders comes in and those things need to be accommodated how it can be accommodated i talk about it and when you talking about this particular like the sales targeting and forecast we started that it, it used to happen in one year and just two years back we made it in six months now it is in three months every quarterly doctorates is the only company is doing the quarterly sales targeting and forecast so with that you have the real numbers of it because one year you cannot you don't know how things will change tomorrow we don't know right then we are talking about that now next to the kind of you know capacity planning so this capacity planning is linked to that so what is your infrastructure is been available and how you can able to do the planning and what way that you can able to use the latest technologies to meet to that i'll talk about those things for example single use technology so many of you may be knowing it right 
single use technologies instead of bloody your stainless steel reactors and all these things are the one time use kind of thing that I talked about in my subsequent slide. And a production planning. Now, your data capacity planning, now you are doing a production planning. Your product, production planning should, system should be intelligent enough to handle that particular when the sales guy puts in order. Right? It should be able to tell it like, this is a technical duty. You understand what I am saying? It should be connected. Because today what we are working in, departments are working in silos. We have an automation in place, but we are not connecting them. We are not using the current data in a right way. Then the next thing is the lab experiment. So this is something is like, for a lab, for a QC lab. So here what has been happens in a QC lab, you have turned around time, right? You need to say like, now for each sample testing, I will give it three, three, the three days of turn around time. Now what is this poor job of section head? Section head job, entire job goes into the planning only. You all agree or not? Most of this time like, no, goes into the kind of you know, planning only. So because you need to have your shift bases and your one time like you know, your sample has been running. So there are certain parameters. So just like you know, imagine a concept of a campaigning you create. So a four samples should be loaded into your equipment at one go. Wherein your sample generation and everything can be done at like you know, one for each sample separate. So in that way, you can able to minimize a lot of time. The system dynamically gives it. Now for example, if a person, yesterday we were talking about resource management. When the resource is off on the particular day, automatically it should be aligned. That's where suddenly there is a material comes in and that needs to be immediately to be delivered or like, you know, tested. So those practical challenges into the current industry can be able to handle with this particular solution for the uh, lab exam. Now you are keep your your product quality review instead of having it like mm, that you need to put a data into one particular, pull the data from your batch manufacturing record and put it in an excel and load it in any statistical tool. So or that if this is the kind of scenario can be eliminated with the quality reviews on the fly. So whenever the particular product has been done, so you have the data is available in whatever the format. If you have an excel format, let's then download it into the system. Let's not talk about like, you know, get it from data. Meanwhile, you work in your MES. You understand what I am saying? You create a roadmap for your MES, I am not saying that because MES getting it is like is a big thing because your equipments can be, if it is a new plant, it is good for you. If it is a older plant, the more older, the more the challenge. So, that employee skill evaluation, just before this particular discussion, like now we are talking about employee skill evaluation. In one equipment, like, who is the best guy out? This particular best guy out is going to get the kind of you know, appraisal link, it linked with it. Simple. It is not a big thing. It's suppose when a vendor, IT technology vendor can able to think in your problem, then of not. Obviously, many of the things can be addressed easily with a low cost way of like, you know, doing it. So then, you think about a pharma book fund. You create a roadmap for 5 years or 6 years and then like you know that, because I am not talking about one plan 5 six years. I see the organizations here are like so larger companies and the smaller companies. Depending on the kind of you know, that your size of the organization and everything, then you can plan that particular thing. So that meanwhile, even though tomorrow you have open to complete some, these systems are required because the connections are being required. End of the day. What is the legislation need? Society demands. Now suddenly I am just like now speaking to the bar of the again. Anybody is there here? The production guys are being like given an apartment and they were staying there. And like you know maybe how many lines are being converted into the top like you know that the coax. I don't know how many are whatever is and how many are like you know coax. So you see that, that is what society demands. So your systems are to be designed. Now coming to this, targeted therapies that need to be manufactured in smaller volumes and smaller volumes. You are talking about, I don't know how many of you agree, because I may be so aggressive, saying that, that personalized medicine which has been coming up. So that the minimal volumes are being required for a certain set of population. So then, that is something you need to be addressed. To address them, what you need? In agile manufacturing facilities, it is not going to be for one product and multiple products can be handled by the one particular line or the other line. Then after that, single use technologies, I was talking about this, the single use bioreactors and also the kind of, you know, some of the unit operations which you can put in. So that what happens is like, you, know, you can minimize uh, the time, uh, especially I am talking about not the cost, like, you know, I am talking about the time to deliver things. So these are the things can definitely help. So when you want it, the digitalization is mandatory for these things. You all agree or not? Mandatory. There is no choice because you do how many forecasts or whatever you do it, but at the end of the day, you never know that the, how the world is going to go tomorrow. Tomorrow, how the kind of China changes its mindset. So now, coming back to this, I have only two slides there. You plan agile manufacturing facilities, right? You plan agile manufacturing facilities. You wanted very dynamic systems. Now, at the same time, now the question comes: Is your technology agile? Is your technology in the sense like, I mean, 
that like no, is an IT inventory is there. Single manufacturing catering to the multiple products. Agree or not? When it is a, when we talk about agile, now why can't the technology right should have a single platform to solve industry problem? You understand what I'm saying? I have one particular technology. You tell me what you want. You tell me a capacity plan. You tell me a production plan. I develop in the same platform. I will not go for like you know, for this I go with Java, this I go with the other technology, this I go with some other technology. We will not go with anything. You underlying thing you would like to use it and do a value addition on top of it. So that is what is called as a low code plan. Just give you a classic example. As an ample logic, we have these products and services. I'll give you a classic example. Many of you know Sun and Ramp Taxi Magic. Right, understand? Though two big companies have been like you know, merged. There is a so much, these systems are different, these systems are different. We managed to create like you know, six projects to meet the kind of, you know, to minimize their backwards in a span of just you know, four months. So this is what I mean. So agility is something is like, you know, more but important because we should not say that technology, like, this doesn't work, Microsoft doesn't give it. Like, you know, this doesn't work because, like, you know, Java does not support it. We should not use that technology. We should talk about that, yes, you have a single platform wherein I created one user and one solution. You should work everywhere. You understand? So this is what is something I would like to talk about. What is this low code technology? As an ample logic, we started the journey of the low code in 2012. I think we have good number of satisfied customers also here. So giving a small uh, intro about this. So it is we have uh, 190 engineers are there, 15 ready to use applications, and uh, 100 plus customers what we have. And we have a project success rate is 98 percent. No customer, you just check it out in the ample logic website. No customer will say like the ample logic is a bad way. In terms of actually, in terms of giving the service, because we take when when you are giving us a requirement, any requirement you are giving it, it is not your personal problem, it is your business problem. When I can able to address your business problem, then obviously it is going to address someone else. Right. That's the mindset this ample logic works. So that's where we've been trusted by the customer, and so I think I think I'm on time. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Great. you. Thank you very much. And uh, any questions?